so hi. Um, so I'm Asya, um, and I'm working in Mobileye. If you don't know Mobileye, now it's a part of Intel, and we develop an autonomous vehicle. Um, so I would like to uh, talk to you today about uh, uh, how you can use Python and OpenCV in order to uh, draw road markings and uh, in this way augment your data set. So first, what is augmentation? Uh, augmentation is the process of making something larger in size or amount. And the agenda for today is first to talk about computer vision and autonomous driving. Then we'll talk about the OpenCV library. And next we'll present our augmentation tool. And in the end we'll conclude. So what is computer vision? Computer vision is an interdisciplinary field that incorporates knowledge from math and physics, signal processing and machine learning. And the goal is somehow to mimic how our eyes and uh, brain work and incorporate uh, visual knowledge and visual data, such as uh, images and uh, videos. And the area undergoes a major revolution in the uh, last few years with the deep learning technology. In the classic uh, computer vision approach, you have um, some problem. You design a specific algorithm in order to solve this problem, and this is how it works. Uh, in deep learning, you have a neural network with several layers, and uh, you have a, an input a, of a large data set that you throw on a network, and then you make the network learn something about the data. And the network is not uh, tuned uh, exactly to uh, the problem that you have. Sometimes you just don't realize what happens inside this network. And the problem is that sometimes you just don't have enough data. Deep learning algorithms uh, use large amounts of data in order to work. And if you have a small data set, sometimes you won't be able to generalize. You can learn something about uh, this small data set that you have, but you won't be able to learn something about the real world. So uh, the usual approach for that is to do something that is called augmentation. And uh, there are basic techniques for doing augmentation. For example, you can uh, flip images, you can change their colors, you can rotate them, crop them. And these are the basic techniques that are uh, mainly used. Um, and uh, our idea is to do an augmentation that is more sophisticated and uh, to use the knowledge that we have on the world in order to do augmentation. But what is the domain that we're working in? We're, we want to develop an autonomous vehicle in Mobileye. Uh, this means that um, we uh, want to have a vehicle that drives around uh, the world and, uh, and is able to cope with every scenario on the road. So in order to be able to, uh, to deal with the, the roads all over the world, uh, we need to incorporate data on the objects in the scene on the road. So uh, we need to be able to detect uh, vehicles, pedestrians, traffic signs, traffic lights, and road markings. And uh, in this talk, I want to focus only on the detection of road markings. So what are these road markings? These are the colored lines on the road that describe lanes where you can drive. So the basic types of road markings are solid lines and dashed lines. But actually, that around the world that there are many, many types of these road markings. So there are many styles. They can look like that. They can be like that, or like that, or even like that. So there are many, many types, and our algorithms need to be able to cope with all these types if we want our car to drive safely all over. But there are also different colors of road markings. They can be uh, white, they can be yellow, they can be orange. Um, 
and they can have this sort of texture on them and they can even be blue in Korea. Uh, so the problem is that sometimes we, uh, our data set is not uh, large enough or it doesn't uh, represent well enough the world. Um, and uh, we have these sort of uh, corner cases that we want to be able to deal with. For example, that there are uh, um, roads that have deceleration areas that exist only in uh, China and uh, Japan, and uh, we need to be able to cope with, the, with these uh, uh, road markings. So uh, in order to be able to deal this, with all these uh, kinds of road markings, we can uh, do something that is called data collection, uh, simply to send more cars, more drivers, collect the data, annotate it, and uh, it's something that takes time and takes a lot of effort, uh, but it works. However, we uh, want to present a solution uh, that is called augmentation, um, and we use the knowledge that we have on the world uh, in order to, uh, to use the data that was already collect, collected and uh, to draw new road markings on uh, the images that we already have. So the goals uh, of this project are, are uh, to uh, automatically generate a lot of new data samples of the road markings that we are interested in, and uh, we want uh, our system to be able to recognize them as real ro road markings, and we want to support different styles and types and colorings of road markings. So uh, now let's present our main tool. Um, OpenCV is a very nice library. It is uh, written in C++. It is cross-platform, open-sourced, and uh, it has Python and Java APIs, and the library has implementations for common image processing, machine learning, and uh, computer vision algorithms. And the Python API of OpenCV is very nice. There are many tutorials online, um, and it uses NumPy as its uh, ba basic uh, data type for images. Now, uh, images are simply uh, NumPy arrays, so it's very intuitive for uh, Python uh, developers. And uh, this is uh, a library that I think that is, uh, should be the go-to tool uh, for uh, computer vision. So uh, now let's get to Tachlas, uh, how we do the uh, uh, augmentation. So uh, the process is uh, as following. Um, First, we, we have video clips and we load the data from them. We load images, we load camera information, and we load uh, uh, some ground truth data, uh, the annotations that were done on uh, these video clips. Uh, then we do uh, 3D modeling uh, of uh, the road markings that we want to add. For example, these deceleration areas are um, road markings that are dashed, that are close to an existing uh, road markings. And uh, after we do this modeling, we want to go to the image and um, draw on the image the, wrong, the road markings that we're interested in. And in the end, we pack everything back to a video clip format that our system can work with. So now uh, I'll talk a bit about uh, coordinate systems bec because it's a, a very important uh, uh, issue when you uh, try to, uh, to understand where uh, things are located in 3D and 2D. So the first uh, coordinate system that is important is the world coordinate system. And it's a 3D coordinate system and it describes the world around us. Uh, the second coordinate system is the camera coordinate system, and it, it's not necessarily the same as the world coordinate system, and the camera is basically the zero point of uh, th this coordinate system. And in uh, 
the uh, the other coordinate system is the image plane which is 2d and the uh, uh, transformation from 3d to 2d is called a uh, projection so um how do we uh, do this 3d modeling of what we want to draw we uh, we load this ground truth data meaning these are uh, 3d points that were uh, marked and annotated um, on the uh, video clips that we have, and they describe where the road is located and the road markings are lo located. And uh, according to this data, we, we can understand where we want our model to lie, where is the road plane, and we do this modeling best based on the ground truth data. Um, and what is our model exactly? Our model is a is a road marking it can be solid or it can be dashed if it's dashed then uh, the properties of this model are the width of the dash and uh, the length of it and the gaps between uh, the dashes and uh, after we have this 3d model we can uh, go to the image plane and uh, try to draw it uh, in order to uh, do the, tr uh, the transition from the 3D world to uh, the image plane, we use a, an abstraction of a camera. It's called the ca uh, pinhole camera model. And this uh, pinhole camera model describes camera as a box with a hole. And the important property is uh, the focal length, which is the length of this box. And uh, this uh, focal length property is part of something that is called calibration. And calibration actually is a, a very important process because it allows us to understand the uh, 3D world relative to uh, what we see in the image. Uh, so uh, you can do camera calibration using OpenCV. There is a... a a camera calibration function that you give to it a, a set of images with a checkerboard and uh, from this uh, function you get the camera calibration information this information includes the focal length and in, it includes the orientation of the camera and um, and maybe the um, other properties of uh, of the camera and here you can see uh, an image of a very distorted checkerboard. And when you give it to the, uh, this function, you get this uh, calibration information about this uh, image. Uh, luckily in Mobileye, um, somebody does this for us. We don't need to apply uh, this function over and over uh, because in Mobileye, calibration is very important for us. Uh, if the calibration is not correct, uh, our system won't be able to uh, understand exactly the scene and it can be very dangerous. So there is a whole calibration team uh, in, uh, in our company. So after we have this calibration information, we can do this projection. And basically the projection is the process of taking the world coordinates, moving it to a uh, the camera coordinates, and then we get uh, the image coordinates. And this is a very simple math that uses a triangle similarity, uh, but you don't need to understand all the specifics, just that we do the transition from 3D to 2D. And, um, and actually OpenCV allows uh, allows it uh, allows you to uh, do this uh, without applying all this math. Uh, you just give a, a, a function that is called uh, project points. Uh, you give it um, the three D points that you want to project. You give it the calibration information, and in the end, you get these two D points. So here is an example of. Uh, of a model that was projected on an image. And these are the uh, white dots. And the model is a model, a dashed model that we want to draw next to a, an existing roadmark. So I think that it's about 
20 centimeters or so uh, to the right of the existing roadmark. Uh, so we have this model, but we want to draw on an image in a way that would look realistic. Uh, so if you look at this image, you see that there is a perspective in the image and the lines become thinner and thinner as, as you move into uh, the image. So if you simply draw a line on the image, it would look bad, it would, won't uh, look realistic. And we want to be able to draw something that has a sort of dimension. Uh, so in order to do that, we first look at an, an abstraction. Um, let's assume that the world if, is flat. And uh, if the world is flat, then uh, you can see in images that there is a, a line called the horizon and a dot on this line that is called a vanishing point that all the uh, lines move towards uh, this point. And uh, if, if you want to draw something that has width, um, the, this width remains the same in the world. However, in the image, it becomes thinner and thinner as you approach this, uh, this uh, point. So, uh, so actually, you can use this sort of an idea in order to draw, uh, for example, a line that is 20 centimeters wide. And uh, if you want to know how it looks, in, in the image, you need to, uh, to know how far you went uh, in the image relative to the horizon. Uh, however, the world is not flat. And uh, this is uh, an image of the steepest uh, road in the world. It's uh, located in New Zealand. And um, of course, this, um, this abstraction of uh, the flat world won't work here, but uh, we can use this idea uh, and uh, in order to draw something that is still realistic, um, if, we, um, if we think about it, roads mainly remain in the same width, so uh, we can lift the knowledge that we have on the ground truth uh, on the uh, road that uh, the data of the road that we already have in order to uh, draw something that has proportion relative to the uh, ground truth data that we have. But what do we draw on? If we draw simply on an image, it would look bad. It won't uh, look realistic and we want uh, to be able to uh, for our networks to recognize the data that we drew. So uh, in order to do that, we draw on a mask. And um, after drawing, we can apply whole image transformations such as blurring um, on, on this mask. And in the end, we do something that is called a uh, blending. We take um, the mask that we drew on and the background image. The background image is the original image and we want it to remain uh, as, as close as possible to the original image. And uh, we take the mask and the background image and some alpha channel, which is random noise that we created, and we blend them in into uh, something that uh, uh, that has uh, this new uh, road markings that we drew. So how do we do that? It's actually a very simple code. We take the foreground and uh, background images, and we take the alpha channel of the noise, we normalize it between zero and one. We multiply only the foreground image with this uh, alpha channel. And uh, we don't, usually in alpha blending, you also mu multiply the background image. Alpha blending is actually a technique that is used in order to, um, to blend images, uh, put one on top of the other in a more uh, realistic sense. Uh, uh, but we don't want to harm the background image that we draw on, so we don't multiply it with alpha. And in the end, we use um, 
the add function of OpenCV in order to put the, for the multiplied foreground on top of the background. So uh, some uh, results or some effects that uh, you can see, here is the original image uh, of a road and we want to be able to draw uh, on the left side uh, of the lane. And uh, after we, we draw on, uh, we, we can see on the left the uh, dashed road markings that we draw on. And uh, if we focus on the car ahead, we see that it has, um, it has a shadow and we drew on top of the shadow in a, in a way that looks uh, realistic. So this is an example uh, of a clip uh, that was generated in this, using this technique. Okay, so there is another example. So in the first clip, um, we generated uh, these uh, deceleration markings on two sides of uh, the uh, dash, uh, dashed model in the middle. And here we have uh, uh, on, uh, it only on the left side. So these are, uh, this is, is a result of uh, the sy our system that recognizes these uh, road markings that we drew, the uh, dashes on the two sides of the existing road mark, and our system recognizes it as valid data. Um, so this is just the beginning of uh, this project. Um, we have uh, a lot of idea of how to improve uh, to improve accuracy and uh, the realism of the images. We want to be able to incorporate um, knowledge on cars ahead of us. And luckily in Mobile, we recognize cars as well. So we can incorporate this uh, data in our system. And we uh, also want to be able to blend other types of objects, maybe pedestrians and or even delete uh, road markings. And uh, you can do many things using this technique. So to wrap up, um, we had um, images that were uh, recorded uh, before with ground truth data. We drew on these images uh, road markings uh, that we are interested in uh, learning and feeding into a neural network. Uh, for each video clip that we have, we can do this operation for many, many uh, images. And in this way, we can get from each video clip dozens or even hundreds of new samples. And we can feed it into a neural network. And uh, in conclusion, uh, OpenCV is a very nice library. Uh, it should be the go-to tool uh, for uh, computer vision. And uh, it's really, really easy to use. Um, you can uh, use uh, classical uh, approaches in order to uh, augment uh, data sets for uh, deep learning. Um, the, uh, ideas that I presented are classical computer vision, um, but you can uh, also use uh, maybe later uh, uh, deep learning techniques in order to improve the data that we already created. And um, even a simple uh, augmentation task such as drawing uh, road markings on images can be very challenging. And actually I learned a lot from this project and I have a lot to learn, uh, and that's it. Questions? <laughs> oh, and one, one more thing. Uh, my boss asked me to uh, say that we are hiring. So <laughs> uh, if you're interested, contact me. So that's it. Okay, uh, so the question was uh, regarding a uh, color of road markings and if we use this uh, knowledge in our system, so of course. 
And yeah, so uh, we want to be able to augment uh, road markings that have color in them as well, Al although it's a big challenge. Okay, so uh, uh, the question was how uh, uh, we measure the quality of the augmentation. So actually, it's still a work in progress, um, but we uh, feed this data to uh, the uh, network that we want uh, to train, and uh, we see how it works, if it improved the uh, true positive rate or, or not and uh, if the uh, false positive rate uh, changed. So, yeah. Uh, so, how much um, information we have about uh, the height of the road, the, the, the curvature and the, how r the road changes. Um, so, actually, that's a challenge. Um, and uh, we don't always have this information. Actually, we usually don't have this information, so we need to, to guess and to assume something like uh, the uh, geometry of the road uh, remains roughly the same, roads uh, remain roughly in the same width, stuff like that. We don't have stereo vision or things like that. Um, we have uh, multiple cameras, but uh, you you can't get this data from cameras, like uh, from uh, meaning that uh, you can get some approximation. Yeah, you you can get an approximation. It's sometimes not a, a very um, precise. So you need to incorporate this data along with other information. So um, the question was, uh, if we, we are not afraid that we uh, would teach the network to learn something that doesn't actually exist. Uh, so actually we have a few tasks that are real and we base our augmentation on, on real data. So we, we start with real, with the real data and try to generate something that looks close to it. Um, so the question was, uh, how, how do we uh, generate uh, augmented data of something that is com confusing to a real driver? Uh, so um, uh, it's a challenge and um, we first start uh, with the uh, tasks that are more uh, concrete, that are less uh, confusing, but maybe we'll do this in the future. Are your augmentations going to start moving together with the video, or are they just going to be a static element? Uh, in your examples, your augmentation was static, even though yeah. the, the video was moving and the other yeah, road yeah. markings were changing. Yeah, so, um, so actually, currently, uh, we're uh, dealing with ta uh, tasks that are um, based on only one image. So uh, the information about the moving uh, um, in uh, the, on the road is uh, is not that important. We can do that in the future, but now it's not that important. So we uh, decided to uh, invest our time in uh, different areas. Um, okay. So uh, the question was if uh, uh, doing this augmentation. Um, uh, if it can uh, put us at risk because uh, we uh, augment only specific types of data and in this way we uh, might uh, teach the network uh, something that is not real. Um, so um, yeah, that's a challenge, um, but uh, we, in the end, uh, we want to use only augmented data. So we, uh, we are actually now we're deciding on uh, what percentage of the data can be augmented and uh, how well is our augmentation. So we need to um, 
to fiddle more with the percentage of the augmented data in order to understand um, what is best for us. And uh, also we, of course, test uh, the network without uh, the augmented data and with uh, the data. And uh, in the end, we'll uh, get to a certain point where we feel comfortable with uh, how the network operates on this augmented data. Okay. So thank you.